What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I am back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action. So if you are unaware, I did come down with the dreaded COVID over the past week-ish uh, and decided to use my time uh, playing some 1v1s on a fresh account going up against some lower level players because I was feeling shit. Anyways, this is the result. Going to go through some highlights uh, of the grind. If you guys want to see these games in full, let me know and I can upload them uh, maybe as an extra. But yes, onwards and upwards. First game we had against Victor. Uh, I can't say his last name, so I'm not going to try. Uh, it was a Zeus versus Ra and... I went for some uh, fairly standard stuff here, just trying to play solidly. So we'll jump into something a little bit more interesting. Boom! We go for a fairly standard two town center play here, going through Hermes as a safety, but also the more important reason here is that the general idea in this matchup is that the way in which Zeus wins, if we're going for a more boomy play where I'm going to two town centers against Ra, is the underworld. And if I can hold onto my, uh, my ceasefire until the underworld has happened, then I'm going to be able to kill a town center more than likely. I'm going to be able to grab the town center, click ceasefire, and then the aim is to hold that position and take the advantage of the population. Normally, Ra is going to win if you don't hit a good underworld, so that's where this matchup goes from. So, simply put, we go for two town center, things are looking good, we're going to play nice and safe, wall up the map, everything's great, let's jump to the action. I, I go for an underproduction of units here in this matchup. Uh, it's risky, uh, your opponent can punish it if they go for a timing push, but uh, if I can go ahead and just play safe, rely on the ceasefire a little bit, don't really want to click it, but if I have to, I will, and just underproduce, then I can get a very, very nice two town center semi fast heroic and not have to overcommit into the cavalry. So I do go through triple stables here just in case. Uh, getting to the royal gauge also means I can produce the cavalry faster, little known fact, and then I can get in with my hoplites. I want to make hoplites, I want to make hippocon. I don't really want to make archers in this matchup. I want to avoid fighting him as much as possible. The hoplites are for taking down the buildings, they're kind of chasing things around, making sure that no chariot archer raids can get in there. And if I have to make some prodromas to deal with the cavalry, I will. Uh, and in essence, I just I just don't want to build archers in this matchup for the most part if it can be helped. So we can do that a little bit later if things get there, but this is the, the general idea. Uh, and just a little bit of skirmishing here, but still not trying to fight all too much, trying to be nice and safe. Uh, and here in this matchup. Uh, we managed to click up through Hephaestus without too much confrontation. I, I even managed, well, I mean, this is part of my general idea with Age of Mythology. You don't really want to go up to 145 of 145 population uh, unless you're preparing for a big fight. Uh, if you're trying to avoid fights, you want to leave that little bit of population just to continue building villages while everything's going on so your economy keeps on pumping. Uh, but yes, get that Hephaestus without too much confrontation. And we're about to gear up to get that underworld happening. My opponent got slightly out of position here, so I can take a short engagement. My heavy Hippocon are going to be able to make very short work of the chariot archers and because he's not basically cavalry spearmen here i feel completely fine to take this fight he does also cast shifting sand here so this is my absolute green light to go with underworld it's going to be a very very safe attack so i can make sure that the basic idea here is that i need to wait for him to be in one position as far away from his back town center as possible and then Underworld on his back down center. So if I can force some sort of shenanigans on that front town center, then the Underworld is gonna be absolute golden. So we caused some pressure up on the front over here with just a few units, uh, and then kind of just pull back, getting ready for the Underworld. We've got the uh, we've got the unit moving in. I'm not sure what I sent if it was like a cavalry or 
or something. Yeah, sort of Colossus in, so the Colossus is going to be enough. He hits Osiris, which does give me a little bit of a worry because it means there's going to be a money nearby to deal with my Colossus. But getting into position right now, the Hoplites are ready, the Heliopoli are ready, the Hippocon going to be coming in straight away. There's a lot of more buildings here than I thought would have been here. I thought one big goal, walk straight past it go for the town center but no two make goals we deal with the first one first and then go straight after the town center it's not going to be much of a of a resistance here with zeus hoplites with the heliopoli we've got some uh, hephaestus upgrades incoming here so everything's going to fall super quickly can send villagers through uh, immediately afterwards make sure that my front town center safe that is actually my weak point if i was in the uh position of the of the egyptian player here i would be thinking more about trying to pressure the front town center and sack this back one before coming back in and defending my home base uh, but that's not what he goes for he's coming back to defend you can see he's got chariot arches which aren't going to be able to deal well with my heliopoli at all he's got maybe some spearmen not so good either the son of osiris is very very strong here but with bellerophon to jump onto him gets a lot of damage done we can push that back, take the town center down. The villagers walk in, ready to cast our ceasefire. And as soon as we grab this town center, uh, we are able to essentially, just have to make sure we don't cast ceasefire in the wrong spot. Uh, we are essentially able to to take this game very very nicely here because we've got the upgrades coming through everything we've got very strong units here the only real worry is going to be walls plus catapult powers to push us back uh, and so long as we keep up our siege we're going to be completely fine here uh, so this is pretty much the game we'll move on to the next one uh, first one is a dub so we have game two now, same player, gave him a bit of a rematch uh, and decided to go in with Loki here. We've got Loki versus Ra on Ghost Lake. A lot of players say that Loki versus Ra is an auto lose for Loki and they might be uh, correct if they were to play Loki in uh, a certain style that I think is bad. So we go for something a little bit spicy in this game. I decide to click up through Heimdall here. It's super spicy going through Heimdall. The idea is that it threatens a huge rush, which basically means that your opponent has to react in some way because if you don't go for the rush, then, or let me explain this a little bit better. If you go for the rush, they need you to defend because it's not like their towers are going to be enough because you can undermine their towers, push in, kill everything. If you don't go for the rush, then they've also still going to have units out, which aren't going to do all too much. So you are effectively forcing units out by clicking Heimdall, regardless of what you do, just because they have to respect it. The fact that Ra has incredibly poor scouting in the early game means that you can pull this off. So I'm going through Heimdall here, not for any reason other than undermine, uh, other, sorry, other than the threat of uh, of Heimdall. So I'm actually going here because I see Ford Hunt on my town center. I'm going for a far second town center here against the Ra, and I'm going to get a huge amount of economy here. Uh, and essentially, it's a fake Heimdall rush with no real threat of anything. I don't even, I didn't even try to fake it. Just the idea of clicking Heimdall is enough here to put my opponent on edge. So this is essentially the big idea here behind Heimdall in this matchup is that you want to find the enemy pharaoh, you want to spy the enemy pharaoh, and then you want to time this undermine such that it will prevent the Migdol stronghold from going up. There is a certain amount of damage that it's going to do, and then you can just deny the Migdol for just that little bit longer, a little bit of extra resources dealt with, uh, and you can live the dream where that is concerned slowing your opponent down so now i do have to deal with these rock drops now what i would normally like to have here when my opponent hits the heroic age is watchtowers but unfortunately i don't have that so we have to go for a little bit of a gamble here and luckily the gamble here pays off we dodge the locust completely with some preemptive movement which normally i end up losing everything when i do that 
but we get away with it here in this game as we are waiting for our watchtowers to come through and to be good we did click up with through Njord here as well I'll have you know we are not going through Bragi we're going for Njord there is a real real important idea behind this uh, and we'll explain that as we get to it so first things first here when you hit the heroic age here with Norse against Ra or even uh, just basically against Hathor you need to make sure you chuck down your hill fort on your second gold mine because as soon as the rock starts coming in you don't have a good uh, answer for the rock without a hill fort on you put the hill fort on the gold mine you can garrison the dwarves when it comes in the when, when the rock comes in the hill fort will be able to target the rock and you should be able to defend against rock raids fairly easily here uh, i go for a greedy second hill fort on the front here but in all honesty probably should just make this nice and safe i do see the army here so i decide to pull back i'm going for a huskal kind of huskal throwing axeman composition here to begin with uh, mostly i just want the huskal here because the huskal is going to be able to deal with both the cavalry and the chariot archers they soft counter cavalry because they do hack damage lots of hack damage uh, and the cavalry have low hack armor and a hard counter obviously those chariot archers the only counter to huskal are axemen and the, and the big idea here is we want to force axe so now my opponent is going for a fairly greedy Migdol here onto his second or third town center. I've got the spy still on that Ferris, so I can see it coming a mile away. Time to go for the first initial attack. Make sure we can deny this, this town center from going up. It's pretty important just to prevent my opponent from coming over to this side of the map. At this point, my army is much, much stronger than the original army that my opponent will be making. Chariot archers cavalry with those Huskull, it's going to be absolutely deadly on those chariot archers, not only that, the, the Hursa, even without Hall of Fanes, are still fairly tanky, they're still strong, uh, and they can come in and they can they can deal with a lot of stuff here and still get those myth units on, so the fact that I still built them in the classic blades to help me get that town center up, help me put a little bit of pressure on early, it's not a complete waste, they do come in and be very, very helpful nonetheless. So now we're starting to see those axemen coming out and now is the time that we've got a ridiculous excess of wood. Guess what's going to happen? We're going to build our farms, we're transitioning into food economy and we're going to get those beautiful, beautiful ring giver yarl. That is the general idea here. We need to, and that's why we went for all of this, this strategy in the first place is to essentially just force our opponent into an army position which we're not going to be able to deal with the ring giver yards you'll notice that i had probably don't even get medium infantry here either it's a very very specific idea that i'm going for all right there we go i get medium infantry but the specific idea is that we are definitely definitely trying to force our opponent away from units that counter our yarl and get them uh, into a point that's very difficult to deal with so now our Yarl were out, our opponent has managed to secure his third town center, which does give me a little bit of a fright as, as a Norse player, uh, but the map's super open. I can go up and grab my own third town center, and now I've got these great Yarls with a ridiculous amount of HP, uh, and they just there's just no counter to them at this point uh, from my opponent, especially if I've got my Huskarl to deal with the, the Camelry and everything else. I can even throw in some old suck a little bit later if need be and essentially all i'm doing right now is going to be checking for gold and trying to put the pressure on if i can hit all the gold mines try and get myself to the mythic age i can see myself with the two of my own large gold mines the, his second gold mine is on the right side of the map as well so all the golds are on the right side and i can just put all this pressure on click up through tier the uh thimble winter is going to be game ending taking down the town center here as well with the ring giver yarls is huge uh and we're in an incredible Incredibly strong position right now. And the final nail in the coffin is going to be the Fimble Winter managing to take down the town center here with the Yarl. Still taking these fights, fine to sack some units. Here we've got, I think I've got three or four hill forts up now, which is only nest, only possible by making all of those infantry units early. If I was going straight in with Yarl, I'd probably only have one or two hill forts max. But having all those hill forts with all of this economy, the Norse economy is so strong. Going for more economic Loki play allows allows you to get these Jarl out very, very nicely. Uh, and essentially here, with all these Jarls, all of these hill forts, the only real counter to them at this point is gonna be Hathor Spearman, Horus Spearman, excuse me, Horus Spearman. 
and we are going to be absolute delights until that happens and we're just not going to allow him there anyways because as soon as we get to it, he's going to be tapping out. Yuchi! Let's get the next one happening. And we jump into game three as if two Ra games weren't enough, we come in to a third Ra game and already do we run into our first Smurf. These people are after me like the plague. Literally after me like COVID was after me. They won't let me have my fun. I just want to have some fun games. But no. We have to go full sweat, full try hard. But I don't realize it's a smurf. We get taken things easily here. We are playing set. Set does have a very, very small window of a win condition in this matchup and essentially it's i need to make sure that i do enough damage with my tornado with my ancestors and potentially even with my shipping sands such that i can get four town centers and have strong enough economy to hold on to them or at least prevent my opponent from getting his third town center if i can be up 20 population up 40 population i'm going to be able to take this game if I'm one town, if I'm three town centers versus three town centers, chances are the Ra player is going to be able to hold forever and push back and I'm going to eventually lose the attrition wall. I basically just uh, decide to go for a fast second town center on the forward location. Sometimes going for fast three town centers in this matchup is possible, but uh, I think in general if I can stay two town centers and, and force the action a little bit more, the three town centers a little bit greedy more and more don't from the Ra perspective. If I go for three town centers, it makes it okay. So I just want to make sure that I'm disallowing a very big boom game here. We're definitely going for some sort of timing, some sort of map control here, and making that work out how it goes. So the general strategy basically in the set versus Ra matchup is the set player wants to stay two town centers wants to use the fact that he's on hunt for the entirety of the game in order to get a 130 population per uh, mythic age happening. So you don't get a third town center, you don't get a fourth town center, 100% don't get You don't want to farm until you've clicked advance, and then after that, you want to be putting on all that pressure. You, I've, got, I've got ancestors, I've got tornado coming, I've got a full population army of chariot archers, and essentially I want to stay chariot archers as long as I possibly can here. My opponent here is trying to go in with an eclipse push uh, onto, onto my army, uh, but at this point I've got a Migdol here, I've got everything I need to defend, I've even got some priests out to deal with his, uh, his Utsukos, so if that ever wants to come in, I can push it off, and, and there is very, very little chance that he gets this center up with me just spamming chariot archers here in order to defend even if he can micro like a god i have enough units to defend this and i'm going to be completely fine with just pulling back sitting underneath my big doll and getting some value from my priest and everything else i do need to make sure i get the food income rolling as well and start thinking about setting up a trade route and then once we do that we're okay uh, to get that economy going that we were talking about just getting the four town centers is not enough against Ra. We need to make sure that you have the economy behind it. So we grab the four town center after the fight, uh, move forward with our army. We have the rhinoceros, we have the chariot archers, we're getting graded, but uh, we're able to take down the Midgar stronghold easily there with that tornado. We want to push in before a potential Osiris comes in, such that we can find out who's going immediately, get some of those juicy, juicy uh, uh, catapults in, we've now got our fourth town center, we've got to keep spamming out chariot arches, the way in which the Egyptian economy works is if I make something other than chariot arches here, I can't really afford to get my economy wrong, so I don't particularly care if I even win the game here. I'm not actually trying to win the game here. I would prefer it if I didn't lose all of my my villagers to his raids, so I have to waste the shifting sands here a little bit, uh, but that's on me for not walling. Uh, personally, I think walls are, uh, are annoying, and I don't like them, but 
We do manage to get a big amount of damage done. Trying to throw down a Migdol on the front here. A very, very greedy, but I did want to get just a little bit of value out of uh, everything. It's 100% going to be either Horus or Osiris coming for me uh, on uh, the back of this. So I just need to be aware of that uh, and not overcommit too hard here in this push. But right now, keeping him off these farms is huge. He comes in with the siege towers and everything else. I'm just going to attempt to get as much damage done onto the Son of Osiris as I possibly can. Uh, and then as soon as he runs back, I can just micro and be completely fine here. But uh, at this point, it's going to be very tough for me to defend uh, the Son of Osiris with everything else. I'm not... I probably overcommit just a little bit with the catapults here with no real intention of keeping the town center down after killing it. It's a lot of resources to invest into making this position. Uh, but, so this is just a little bit of a mistake on my behalf. Should have just pulled back and uh, yeah, set up defensive uh, location for the board town center to make sure we can't take it back and make sure we can trade it. Uh, but hindsight 2020 and we continue on. I end up having to sack the town center because I've got no real good way to deal with these catapults considering I have uh, full chariot archers. And that's on me for not being able to get out of siege tower or anything like that to knock the walls down. One layer of walls like this should normally not be enough to take a town center down, but uh, that just comes down to your lack of preparation get through those, uh, to get through that sort of wall system there. But end of the day, uh, it's kind of a blessing in disguise to lose the town center dropping down to 160 pop means that I'm gonna have more resources available to make sure I don't fall too far behind in tech. And so long as I don't allow this uh, town center to get grabbed by my opponent, then I should be okay here still. Still got the trade running up uh, and trying to set up a good trade right in the corner. Uh, still no wall set up so you can continue to Try and get some raids on me. It stops trying after the initial initial raids are done. And essentially now it's tower defense mode. Hold this position uh, and go back and forth for a while until everything kind of comes into my favor technology-wise. I'm trying to mix in some Rhino of Set here just to like give some bulk to my army, some hack up, hack damage to take down those, those catapults and honestly it works really really nicely uh, and I think it's something that set players might want to consider doing a, a little bit more uh, even even in this portion of the game where tech, where technologies have come through and your units are probably uh, at least as strong as a rhino but I mean it's still a ridiculously cheap unit that can allow you to take that population cap uh, to another level and, and and still allow you to get the technologies to come out uh, and furthermore against egyptians they don't have the heroes in order to deal with these rhinos you don't want to be using uh, priests for example against rhinos they get very very little bonus so the damage they do is is negligible and then also the PSI armor on the rhinos still pretty good so it's an interesting idea here from from me to just try and uh, hold on but essentially here i've got my trade route set up the town centers are close enough to each other such that i can now spam mercenary non-stop i might even be able to spam mercenary from two separate locations i don't have access to medjai though uh, so he does still have that advantage on me from his hometown center uh, but i would suggest that maybe his trade route if is not as big as mine because he needs those resources in order to or sorry population space in order to make units so he can keep pushing forward if he just goes full trade then it's just mercenary versus mercenary and they're going to be able to hold forever and then eventually after holding for long enough he just decides to, to give up i don't actually end up getting the town center back but i got towers set up i got the army up got the mercenary spam it's gonna be pretty unlikely and he does decide to give up games like this feel the least rewarding for me playing against someone i don't know who's got very few games under their belt there's no there feels like there's no meaning behind winning because i don't know who i'm playing against and i mean it just in general i i don't mind smurfing to like reset your rating to to like try a different god but you should be putting your name that you normally play on uh on it like so if if matrius wants to wants to smurf and i want to know that i'm playing against matrius playing an off god you know what i mean and that that's kind of what i feel 
the very very least against the Smurfs. Anyways, this is the first episode of this little run. If you guys enjoyed uh, this one, please let me know. I might try and do some more of these style of video in the future. Uh, this is more of a, I couldn't, literally couldn't talk, so I've got all this footage and I don't want to just put it out there with what the music that was underneath it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do, please consider hitting the uh, like button and the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next one.